Hey, this is Angela Anderson. Watch while I turn this into this. We're going to be working on some mixed media tonight, doing all kinds of fun stuff, uh, grabbing some pencils and pastels and inks and different paints. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, I think it's going to be fun tonight. Um, don't be uh, intimidated by the words mixed media. It just means using other things besides just paint and paper <laughs> or just paint and whatever. You know, uh, we're going to be using some pencils, some different things. But if you don't have what I'm using, don't worry about it. Just use what you've got. Um, that's the fun of mixed media. It's just kind of expands your art journey and trying new things. So we're going to be working on some Arches Aquarelle paper. This is a fancy watercolor paper. But if you don't have this, um, you can also use, I've got some different materials here off to the side here the Frederick's mixed media canvas boards that I always use um, those are really great for mixed media work um, watercolor canvas boards would work um, mixed media paper they I would get like the heavy duty Strathmore paper this one is the heavyweight mixed media paper that they have I do um, sometimes mess around in my mixed media visual journal but this paper is a lot thinner and it will warp and buckle on you whereas these papers that are a little bit heavier duty watercolor paper won't do that as much all watercolors will papers will kind of warp somewhat depending you know on the kind that you're using but, um, oh, my, hold on, I'm having some technical difficulties there, mm -hmm. things sliding around on me. But if you don't have that or you don't have um, a surface to work on, you can always also get a product called Watercolor Ground or Absorbent Ground from Golden. Um, this one is a Daniel Smith product, and you can paint whatever it is you're going to be working on, paper or a, can a regular canvas with this. It's kind of like gesso for watercolor, so it allows kind of a different watercolor techniques. If you're not going to be using watercolors at all and you're just going to be doing you know regular acrylics and things then you don't have to pre prepare your surface special at all so it's just kind of up to you what you want to do with it um but I was kind of practicing this is kind of the look that I'm going to go for tonight that kind of softer um pastel -y kind of I don't know we'll look it's got watercolors pastels inks pens all kinds of fun stuff in there so that's kind of what we're going to try for tonight. I haven't done this ahead of time, so you're going to get to see me kind of work it out live as we always do. Um, and as I use the materials, I'll make sure that I mention them, but I do have a link down in the description to an Amazon shop called Mixed Media Kit that has all of the things that I thought I would probably be using tonight. So all the stuff that I pulled out, I made sure to pop into that list so you can see exactly what they are and if you want to grab them, great. Um, if not, whatever, you know, but at least you kind of can get to see what it is exactly that I'm using the brands and things like that. All right, so I've just used some washi tape to tape down the edges to give myself a nice border on my watercolor paper. I haven't done anything else to it to prepare it. Okay, Woo, let's go. Fingers crossed this works. <laughs> I have been trying out different uh, little techniques and I, the thing that I have noticed with myself is that um, as in all acrylic flower uh, type tutorials, I tend to overdo. <laughs> I just want to do all the flowers. So I'm going to try to hold myself back to um, being a little bit more conservative here and, and uh, edit myself so that I don't use I don't have to use all the stuff. <laughs> I have all the stuff out. I don't have to use all of it. I'm just saying that a mantra in my head right now um, so that I know <laughs> have a little bit of discretion here as I work. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do my background kind of watercolor and then we'll add layers on top. With mixed media, basically you want to work from kind of a light application to heavier application and from water to oil if you're going to use oils oils would be the very last step so um, you can use like alcohol inks and things like that those won't react to water but they will react if you add anything other alcohol on top of them so you kind of have to know your materials and experiment and I just kind of grabbed a 
a, a sheet that I had already kind of scribbled on with other stuff. And I was, I tried out different things. I saw how different pencils worked on top of things. And I tried different applications of um, different materials just to kind of get familiar with the materials and how they layered. So I would suggest doing that, be, play with it a little bit, play with what you have, see how they interact and um, react before you um, start on your really fancy expensive paper <laughs> like I'm doing today. Okay, let's get going here. So I've grabbed a dusky purple ink tents, Derwent ink tents pencil, and this will uh, react when I add water to it. I'm gonna do this little um, star-shaped flower up here at the top, and I'm just going to very lightly kind of sketch out and make some little scribbles where I want the darkest part of this, because this Inktense pencil will um, turn to um, watercolor as it's wet. But the nice thing about the Inktense pencils is that they will dry um, completely solid so you can, or waterproof, so you can layer over them and um, you don't have to worry about them lifting like with watercolor. I did notice that with the watercolor when I was m messing with them. Um, I did my background and then I was trying to layer over like alcohol inks or wet inks on top of the watercolor was lifting the watercolor. So just kind of know that going in, if you're going to be using watercolor that, um, you know, you may have to be careful of how they're layering and kind of know what to layer. So I'm using a deep rose here, um, pencil and these ink tents come in like sets um, they are dye based, so they're not like a regular watercolor pencil. You can use regular watercolor pencils if that's what you have. Um, but these ones are deeper colored. So I'm kind of going a little bit light on my application, but I'm going to go a little bit darker in a couple places where I want this to show up a little bit better. There's a couple of like, spiky flowers right there. And, um, all right, so let's do this big yellow one in this corner over here. And I'm just gonna use these kind of just to sketch so that when I do my watercolor, I kind of have a base to go off of and I'll know sort of where to put my watercolor and um, then we can layer on all this other fun stuff. So I'm gonna use a cadmium yellow here and do this spiky goldenrod type of flower here. And you can use whatever flowers you have in your garden. That's the nice thing about something like this is you can kind of you know, adapt it to whatever you want to paint. Um, and this style, I think, is a little bit more accessible for beginners because you don't have to worry about, like, I would say, go into this thinking, I'm going to just take what I get out of it. I don't want to have a lot of preconceived notions about what exactly it needs to look like um, because you'll have a lot more fun if you do it that way and um, just kind of embrace it as it goes. Now, this one is a white flower, so I'm not going to do a ton in the middle here. I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of green. I've got some teal green here that I'm doing with it. And again, if you don't have these particular pencils, you could use regular colored pencils if you want. It'll show through your watercolors, but it'd be beautiful. So um, just, you know, like I said, whatever you've got. Now, um, if you're going to be using like a, I've got some pens here that are Strath, uh, Stadler fine tip, uh, fine liner pens. Um, I would just do a little scribble on some paper and add water to it and see what it does. So these ones will bleed when I add water to them, which would be kind of a cool effect if I want that to happen. So, and I also have some other ones here that are the Tombow acid free pencils and are uh, watercolor uh, pens and they will also bleed. So I might just dab a little bit of those on and you can see kind of what they do when they get wet. Um, so, and again, then I've just got regular watercolors here. We'll use those, the pastels. I actually found these to be the most fun to use, and I've had these for like a couple of years and never pulled them out. They're the Prismacolor uh, New Pastel. They're a little bit harder pastel, and I broke one. I was really mad at myself when I did that, um, when I was playing with it, New Pastel. So be careful of that. Kind of don't hold it on the very end and press down because <laughs> you will break them. Um, but yeah, that's a fun set there, so... Lots of fun goodies. I've I've got these in my studio and I never pull them out because I'm always painting in acrylics. And I was like, I just, I don't know. I want to try something new. So you guys are along for the journey with me. <laughs> like it or not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hopefully like it. Um, hopefully you'll kind of have some fun and maybe it'll, you know, inspire you to try some new things, branch out a little bit. So 
If you missed it last week, we did our AI um, girl in um, kind of used an AI image, had a little bit of controversy in the comments, but that's okay. People have a strong opinions about AI. I was kind of ready for that. I figured um, that would happen, but we had fun doing it. And I feel like we actually were watching an, uh, a, uh, okay, I'm going to grab dark chocolate here. Um, I'm going to do some of these kind of daisy-like flowers with a dark chocolate just to kind of give them a little bit structure. Um, we were watching a, a show about music, of all things, and they were talking about auto-tune and how, how when it first came on the scene, people were just like, how dare you use that? You know, that's going to ruin music and whatever, you know, and now it's kind of an, you know, accepted part of people have kind of turned it into its own art form and, um, not, you know, not good, bad or than, or indifferent. I don't care about art auto tune. I just care about people being able to express themselves through art however they want to. So, um, I find the arguments against new technology to be pretty limiting and, um, Again, you know, AI in itself is, yeah, it is a scary kind of thing. It can, I, I think there should be some limits to certain applications of it, but like any new techno any technology of any kind, it can be abused in the wrong hands and used in the wrong way. But I don't think there's anything inherently scary about using a image generator to help you find um, inspiration for your artwork, you know, it's not, I don't know. Anyhow. All right. So enough about that. Shiraz, that's what the color I'm using now. <laughs> but the, the, anyhow, the music, um, thing was, you know, interviewing some different people. Mark took some quotes from it cause it was pretty, pretty fun, interesting quotes about, um, just, um, new technology in general and how people react to it and stuff. So I don't know what Mark's doing. He's not talking to me. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to introduce you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I just jumped right in and didn't you even just, say hi. You ran off. I did. I was going. I'm going, going, going. I thought going, this was going, 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 leave going, no going. man behind, but <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't want to break in your mojo there. I was, so. I was on it. I'm on a roll here. Um, iris blue here, just a blue pencil. Yeah. yeah. So one one of the quotes that I liked, it, and this is a lady who act basically invented auto tune back in like nineteen. Well, she didn't invent it; she used it in her. She was one of the first to use it, and was on. Um, she was a sound engineer that developed. Helped develop. Yeah. Right. So, right. anyways, uh, I'll get her name for it, but. Uh, she said, it's hard to accept something new when it comes along because it's not tied down to a known reality. And I thought that was very interesting. Yes. So, that's why, yes, you know, people can't accept me. It's hard to accept me because <laughs> I'm not tied down to any known reality. I take your reality and I substitute my own. Is that the <laughs> Mythbusters quote? Something I reject like, your reality. Reject your own reality yeah. and substitute my own. <laughs> that was the one of my, always my favorite quote of theirs. Yeah. All right. So just doing all these little flowers here, really get as creative and detailed as you want. This is your painting. So you do, you do you. I'm going to grab uh, another Shiraz pencil here. And... Doing these kind of spiky flowers here. And this may not be dark enough. I don't know. We'll find out when we add water to it. That's the fun of it, you know. <laughs> we don't know. We'll we'll just find out together how, how this is gonna all come come out. I'm gonna do some very loose flowers. I'm really not wanting these to look too fussy. Like I'm not being too precious or careful about how I'm drawing them. Just trying to kind of get some lines on here and be really expressive. So this is all about expression and letting your own kind of, um, letting your own light shine here. And just doing a few more with that pencil. Let's do a little bit with this apple green, maybe color in some of these leaves or do 
some little scribblies and in betweens with that. And I think we'll be about ready for our watercolor. All right, so this is the exciting part. We'll see what is revealed here with our scribbles. Um, I've got my core watercolors. Um, I had these are wet. These are the um, watercolors in the tubes, but I um, have put them in little pans. I got these pans um, and added magnets to the bottom of them, and I have a much bigger pan of them here. Um, and then I just pull out the ones that I want when I want them, and I've got a little sheet that tells me what the colors are and everything. But it makes it really easy to do, and it's not just core. I've got Daniel Smith and um, Schminky and some other watercolor brands in there as well. Hey, yeah, re really quick, somebody just asked, is Shiraz the color yes. or the brand? Okay. The Shiraz is the brand. The, the, the right. pens are called Derwent Ink Tents. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, it's, and Shiraz is the color. Shiraz was the color that okay. I was using, yeah. Right, perfect. Let's use some of this carmine pink. I just realized I didn't use any of it, so let's do some carmine pink down here. Okay, so we're going to do kind of a wet onto wet. So what I'm going to do is just kind of spray this lightly with water. That'll kind of open up the... Um, open it up. I don't want to brush it on because it'll kind of pull the inks around and I think I'm going to lay this flat to start with. I'm going to move these pencils kind of out of my way. I just pulled off the ones that I thought I would need for starters. So I'm going to just very lightly, I've got my water bottle, I'm going to very lightly spray this down. Maybe a couple. What that's going to do is start moving that paint around. It may not be enough there, but We'll see. I am not a watercolor artist, so you'll find that out real quick here as soon as I start working. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to use an oval wash or a long round. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to actually maybe I'll just use this one because I think I'm going to switch between these two. I'll use the Heritage wash brush, three, three quarter inch. I'm going to get some water. And let me see. No, I don't think that's wet enough. I'm going to get a little bit more water. Go until I start to see them. Ah, there we go. You can see where it's kind of starting to move that ink. They're moving. That's what I want. Okay, there we go. Now, I don't want it puddled up too much, though. So I think I'm going to do my back. leave my background mostly white. And let's see. What colors do I want to use here? Let's start with some quinacridone gold, and we'll put some of that behind our yellowish flowers. I've got kind of a gold flower here. Oh, I forgot to draw in my butterfly, too. So I'm going to push that around. You can see the other colors are going to start to mingle with it and move around. Ooh, got some yellow up there. That's all right. I didn't. I forgot. That was one of the rules about watercolor that I forget is you're supposed to have a separate cup for all your stuff. So I may have to have you get me a separate cup for my watercolor to dip into because this is going to be messy. Okay, I'm going to dip, drop in some of the purple. And leave. You can see it kind of moving. If it's not moving enough, you can spray it with a little bit of water or use your brush to brush through it. But that looks pretty good. It's kind of moving a little bit. And what I can do is kind of tilt my page too if I want to get it to move a little bit more than it is already. I'm going to push in. And I don't need this to be particularly clean as far as like I want it to kind of merge and blend and move around so I'm going to make sure that I have water everywhere so that it can kind of merge and be really soft and fluffy looking all right so let's do a little bit of blue in this one maybe get some cobalt teal 
And I think I'm going to use that in my white one. And I'm going to put white on top of this, so I'm not going to worry about it being white. I just want a color down so that when I do the white on top of it, it'll look good. Um, and then let's go ahead and use some of this color down here. Now I gotta work fast with watercolors. You don't want to let that background dry too much while we're doing this. So I'm gonna just drop in some green over my leaves. You can kind of see that. It's getting dry down here, so I'm going to spray it a little bit more. And I'm just going to keep spraying it while I'm working so that it stays damp and I can, you know, like work these um, layers here. And let me go ahead and just use this and brush through some of this. You can see my paper starting to get like really like soggy though, so I can I need to be careful not to if if it gets too soggy, and especially if you're using a paper that's not a good heavy white paper, um, what it'll do is just start to tear on you as you're um, painting on it. So you definitely don't want that to happen. So just kind of be careful and um, be aware of what your paper's doing as you're working. And if it starts to act like it's going to tear or whatever, then, you know, stop, obviously, and let it dry. You can see that that ink from that pen is starting to kind of move a little bit. It's not moving that much, so I probably should have used it while it was wet. Let me, let me try it while that paper is wet and see what happens. I think it's going to move around a lot more for me. It's not wanting to do anything. All right, I think these are old. <laughs> Let's try the purple one. See if that does something. No, it's not. Okay, so fail, not working there. I'm not really sure how to use those, obviously. Okay, so the new pastel, these ones are the Neo Color, not sorry, these aren't the new pastels. These are Cron Dosh um, Neo color and they are water soluble so I can draw into this wet and they're going to spread and do fun things so I'm going to add some of that on while this is wet and I'm kind of leaving some little bits of the white showing through too because I kind of like the look of that so ooh, you can see it's picking up some of that um, red from that Shiraz pencil too Oh yeah, these ones were kind of more pink, so let me grab some pink. This one is um, purple. That one that I was just using was called Violet. And then let me grab a... Okay, obviously, are these both purple? These are both purple. I had two sets, so obviously I had the same color, rose and purple. Let's try those two on these more like burgundy or kind of pink flowers. These ones are really supposed to be more purple. And again, make sure it's not going to tear your paper. The nice thing about these that I like is that they're really soft. So they're not likely to tear your paper as much. They're, they can go over um, on this wet paper and they're not they're not going to drag and grab your paper. They're sort of a wax um, base, so they're real kind of creamy feeling, but they don't, um, they don't, uh, they are water soluble. So they're not, you know, you is if you put layers over them or add water to them, they're going to spread. And with something like this, I would probably say, um, recommend like, um, using a, this one is vermilion, um, using a um, fixative um, over it before you do anything, you know, like so when it, when you're done, use a little bit of fixative and seal it up with that. Oh, that wasn't the same flower. Okay. I thought that was for dentures. I'm going to use the blue. This one is the ultramarine blue. <laughs> fixative <laughs> fixative and forget it there you go hey uh do you know so is that watercolor paper yes it is yeah all right do you know the weight of it it is 400 gram i think let me see 
300 gram. 300 gram. Right. Not pound, okay. Gram. Thank you. Yes. All right, so I'm thinking I like the what what it's doing here. I like this one especially. It's really pretty here. Now, if you want to kind of soften off while this is still damp, you can kind of touch it and uh, with with clean water. Obviously, mine's not clean, <laughs> so <laughs> don't do what I'm doing. Um, let me use a little bit of cadmium here. I'm going to add some yellow to the tops of these, maybe add some yellow to the flower here, maybe some brighter to some of those a little bit in the centers of the flowers here I've kind of left around these ones I kind of like the kind of look of it but you know honestly this is again yours so you do what seems good to you on yours um, I am going to draw in a little bee at some point but I'm not right now all right so and then also what we can do here before we get too far so I'm gonna splatter a little bit um, and this is gonna do some fun little things so let's use what color do we want to use let's use um, let's use some of this may green it'll be kind of fun but maybe not too bright kind of like mark no <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. I heard it coming out of my mouth. I was like, oh, okay. It's got to do it. <laughs> got to do it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to... I've loaded up the um, uh, long round here. I don't want too much brush paint on my brush. I'm just going to tap in here. And this is going on top of this paper that is kind of slightly damp. So it's it's gonna actually move that paint around a little bit. It's gonna absorb in and do some fun things. And if this was, like if my paper is to the point where it is um, actually almost dry and I do that, it'll, it'll create those little blooms that you see. Um, so I'm gonna take my paper, my, um, I'm gonna try to create a bloom never done this before correctly so we'll see if we can make it happen live but I'm going to use my hair dryer and blow dry this until it is almost like just not shiny just barely not shiny so um, let's and I want to make sure I don't have any puddles before I do this so I don't see any major puddles if you do just damp those off with a paper towel um, I've got some heavy wet right there but I think it'll be okay when I dry it so okay here we go I don't know if you could see that in this area, it kind of just went from shiny to dull, just really in just a couple seconds. So I think I'm gonna try to make a bloom and I'm gonna use white, maybe a little bit of the green, just like a light, light green, maybe a little bit of the, there we go. The white is gonna help kind of push back some of this color Oh yeah, it's doing it. So blooms, it sounds just like what it what it is. So what it does is it takes the um, layer of paint that is not quite dry, that is dry but dry-ish, but not fully dry, and it pushes it. When you add the wet paint on top of it, the wet paint pushes that dry paint out. And I'm using phthalo blue now, and I'm going to do some blooms with that. I want to get some up here in my sky, too. That's going to be really pretty. Okay. okay. 
so there's one right there that's starting. So what's it gonna do is just take this green that was behind that and just that wet paint just pushes at, pushes it out. It's watercolor, water is going to move to where there's least resistance. So if you've got a wet puddle, it's gonna go to a dry area, um, unless it's fully dry. It's like damp-ish area, I should say. Um, so anyhow, that, that looks good. That's kind of doing what I wanted it to do. It's kind of doing some nice, fun little blooms there. I'm not gonna do too many of those. I'm gonna take a paper towel here and just damp off a few of them so that they're not too heavy. Um, but that looks pretty good, I think. And then now I need to dry it completely before I do anything else. So this was kind of the intermediate step, and now I need to make sure that it is 100% dry before I do the next step. Why don't you take that, honey, and I'll let you do that. It's not gonna take very long, but I'll let you I'll do see that. You I'll see you in an hour. <laughs> yeah, if it was like last week. Um, I've got really exciting news. We're going to be releasing our new website. We've been working on the, the website for over a year um, and it is finally ready to go. Um, it's not 100% the way it's going to be when we fully finish it. So we're gonna add a blog and newsletter and some other things to it. But for now, it's gonna have every single video that I've ever done, plus all the traceables, reference photos, and any Patreon content are all going to be on my new website. So that'll be Saturday. We're gonna do a little live stream for you all and um, go over the new website. So I'm really, really excited about it. I hope you guys join us for that. I'll be on screen, Mark will be on screen, you get to see us. <laughs> Hopefully I'm having a good hair day that day. Um, and we're going to um, work uh, or just go through and kind of show you um, through the new website um, of the different features. I usually let that dry, but I'm going to just damp it off because I want to close it and get it out of the way. Um, but yeah, so that'll be Saturday. Um, we're going to have little guest speakers from um, my team that have helped me build the website. So you'll get to meet Brennan and Ben and my brother Josh, who built the website and helped um, helped populate it with all of the goodies. There's over 5,000, I think, images and different um, there's almost a thousand videos and every video has its own reference images, finished painting, traceable, all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, you should be able to just hold your hand on that. And if it feels, if it feels cold, then it's not fully dry yet. So this looks great, honey. Thank you. Good. Yep. All right. Good job. All right, so now we're, we kind of have this really fun background and now we can really do whatever we want with it. Um, I definitely think I want to add some acrylics at some point, but I think I'm going to kind of ink in some um, details first and then we'll go to, I don't think I'm going to use a ton of any more watercolors. So I think I'm done with the watercolor layer because the watercolors um, for this won't layer that much. You kind of have to use them for the background and then use heavier things on top. So I'll probably use the fluid acrylics and things like that for the next layers um, and hope that they don't wipe off everything we've done so far. <laughs> so, all right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go back to... Let me get a pen. This is an acrylic marker. And I think I want to get my pastel pencil and maybe a couple of wax pencils. So the difference between these two pencils is this one is a chalk pastel and this one is a wax based pencil. So this is the traditional color pencil and then I've got some that are more um, either chalk pastels or chalk just uh, just regular pastels but generally pastels have kind of a chalky um, texture. So they're going to go on a little bit rougher so you can tell the difference. You can actually hear the difference. The, the um, Chalk pastels will, will have kind of a fuzziness, a graininess, but you can kind of blend them with your finger and things. And then the, um, past, the pencil will go on a lot smoother. It'll be really kind of almost greasy, 
but um, they're not as easy to layer over the top. So if you're um, layering, I would say do your chalk first and then your pencil, your wax pe based pencils after. So um, that way you can layer to your heart's content. You can do all these, you know, fun things with your one pencil and then go back in and with the um, the colored pencil and you can kind of blend and it'll kind of soften up your edges. So if you want to kind of get a little bit harder edges anywhere, whatever, it'll, it'll work really well for that. I'm going to grab my pencil tin here and try to find a darker green. There we go. Give it some depth. So I don't want everything to be super light. You know, I want to Put in some darker areas here. I said to do this the chalk first and then I did the exact opposite, but that's alright. So there, and then what we'll do is we'll go over this with our acrylic marker, and the acrylics will kind of go over everything, you know, for the most part. Um, they're going to be a lot, you know, kind of the, the finishing step for us on some of these areas and I'm going to keep it pretty sketchy like not sketchy as in from the wrong side of the tracks but you know sketchy as in like line lines and I don't know stuff you know I just want it to be kind of loosey-goosey a little bit looser than what we normally do all right so I'm going to use the purple I think and do these lines that are coming from there and just kind of do them a little bit a little bit loose don't want to cover all this nice stuff that I've got going on. I just want to add a little bit of detail. And I might want to do this. I should have done it with probably a pencil because it had been a little bit less detailed. So let me try with a pencil. Get a pencil here. Kind of start from light to dark too. Instead of going dark, uh, or instead of going dark and then adding the light on top, I find that with this kind of style, that it was a little bit easier to um, do the light and and work towards the dark. Um, and because I've I found like with some of my examples that I ended up with really dark areas and nowhere to go with it. Like I didn't have any light left. Um, and it's harder to add the light on top of this kind of, a, um, of, of artwork. So it's harder to, you know, add your light details unless you're using acrylics, which we can totally do, you know. So it's, but, you know, traditionally with watercolor too, you would be working with, you know, leave your light areas light and then just do your dark areas and slowly build up your darks. All right, I'm going to get some of that dark green. Add some of that. That area is a little bit wet still. Maybe do some leaves up this way. Honestly, this is all up to you and your imagination. So that's the fun thing about it. You can kind of go to town, do it um, however you want, and hopefully maybe de develop a you know a style of your own that you like and want to follow up and use in some of your other artworks. I'm going to use this is a Prismacolor grade lavender. Kind of a light color, not really showing up, so I'm going to grab a different one. Try to just find one that shows up. This one is cloud blue. There we go. That one's showing up a little bit. This is what I'm talking about, that Okay, so I don't want to lose that fuzziness on there, so I think I'm going to leave that one. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So that's kind of going to be the the gold standard here, and I'll try to kind of make the rest of them sort of fit that aesthetic. I'm going to use this pencil for the white flower. And I said I wasn't going to do any more white, but I am going to do a little bit of white here with the ink. I've got some watercolor ink. And I'm just going to use the tip here. I need to shake it up. So the alcohol pens didn't work? The what? The alcohol pens? I haven't used the alcohol pens yet. No. What was it that didn't work? 
Um, well, these ones didn't work on top of the, you can see where I did them right here, and they didn't bleed very much, so they soaked into the paper really quickly. I did use them on the other paper. They worked well on top of the acrylics, so maybe if you did them on top of an acrylic layer, they would work a little bit better, but I noticed when I used them on top of wet, like if I use them now on top of the dry um, watercolor, they lifted the watercolor, so I'm not going to so, do it. So what are those called? Huh? What are These those ones called? were the Tombow. Um, I can't. Uh, duo, duo pens, I think they're called. Okay, they're a pen. They're an ink. They're an ink okay, pen, right. but they're a, they're supposed to be um, like water soluble. I mean, I've used them before and they they were fine. So um, it's just a I don't know. You know, it's just they're doing weird things. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna dab on some watercolor white. Um, could be ink, really, but this is this is watercolor, so it's gonna be water soluble. And I'm just going to dab on a little bit of water just in that area, just to kind of get them to move around a little bit. And I probably should have wet it down before I did this, so that then they would have pulled up. I didn't really think that through very well. So you guys are getting to see the real deal here. This is me just trying new things, you know, experimenting. Probably, uh, every time I'm doing this, though, I'm kind of learning and kind of, like, putting that in my brain, like, okay, for next time, I'll know to, when I'm using that ink, to, you know, wet it down first and then put the ink down, whatever. So it's all about learning and trying new things. So that's kind of fun. That one, um, I kind of want a little bit more of that lighter color at the top there. I kind of wish I'd done a little bit darker around it, but it's fine. Okay, so that's good. And then we'll go in with the pencils and add add some darker details around it, I think. But that, that'll be fun. All right. Let's do it on these flowers. Let me, I said I was done with the watercolor, but now, now I'm rethinking it. I want to use that white that I have there. So I'm going to wet down these flowers. And we'll use it on the, just these flowers. And you want to wet down past where you think you want it to go. Or if you want to stay really tight to a, just a certain area, then carefully paint in that area. And then you can add this. Um, but the nice thing about the white watercolor is that it is um, opaque. And so it will cover over other layers um, as opposed to regular watercolors. So it's kind of like a gouache almost, I think. I'm not really sure what it's made out of, but I'm going to, come on, see if I can get some on here. Actually, I'm gonna put it on my palette over here. There we go. Now I can kind of dip into it. All right, so these are the areas that I've wet down. I could do this with acrylics too. So if I did it with acrylics, it wouldn't move as much. That's the thing with the watercolors that's different from acrylics. Acrylics, you put it down, it's going to stay where you put it. With a watercolor, if it's wet around it, it's going to move to the wet area. So that's the main difference. And uh, for good or bad, you know, so whatever, if you want your layer to stay exactly where you put it, then use acrylics for this layer, you know, and, and just use acrylics for certain things. And you can do the background with acrylics too. If you don't have watercolors, don't, don't think you can't do this. Just you do it. It won't be as fuzzy, but you can still get a similar effect with watercolor or with acrylics. Um, so. Okay. So what is that? In some, what is that stuff that you're using? This right is now? what watercolor ink. Watercolor ink. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eco line. I put it in that list. Mm -hmm. uh, liquid watercolor. All right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I have this question only because when we were in the Dollar Tree this past weekend, I saw that they had the old fashioned watercolors, you know, in the little plastic trays, you know, for like right. a dollar or something. Right. So for me, a serious question would that type of watercolor work, work just as well as what you're using? Sure. For? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it won't be as vivid, but I'm not using it really dark here. So, yeah, for sure. You could use the cheaper watercolors. It's not going to 
be now they won't do the white here you know the white ones right, right. Uh, won't be in that right but, but just but, that standard oh for sure rainbow palette for that, back- that you get yeah for the okay. background 100 percent. yeah this is definitely one that i you know i could see doing with kids like i could i i think that it would work really well for you know working with kids and just grabbing you know grab what you've got and use it that that's the main thing you know don't don't let don't let it limit you i've got a neon one what we're using that hello I did not know I had a neon pencil. You could use neon or acrylics if you have that. How fun is that? Okay. I'm going to add some of that down here. Just a couple of places. So whenever I add a color that's unique, I always want to add it other places because it, it always tends to kind of um, look better if you do, you know. I really love the way this turned out. I kind of don't want to do a whole lot to it because I love it. So um, don't let me mess it up. <laughs> she says as she grabs a pencil to mess with it. Okay, so I am going to do a little bit of darker areas. That's the only thing that I think it needs is just a little bit of darker here and there. And I'm using the pastel here. I'm going to use my finger. And you can also use like a Q-tip. And the thing with pastels, I don't know if you knew this, but if alcohol, they will move like move, move. So I'm gonna use a little bit of alcohol. You can tell I've been watching a lot of mixed media pista. <laughs> I love watching mixed media artists. I find it fascinating because it's so different from what I do. So there we go. So I can get that. It's not going to hurt the watercolors at all. Whoops. I grabbed a little bit of white there. This is just alcohol. But it'll push that pastel around a little bit more than just using your finger. And then it'll evaporate off. So it's not going to hurt your watercolor or anything else. So there we go. That looks good. Um, I think I'm going to actually dip that pencil into the watercolor or the alcohol there. And just dab in some little Fitzy's grumbling. He had to go to the vet today, so he's not happy with me. Mm -hmm. He was defending me, though. He was defending our room. Every time somebody would come in, he would bark at them, make sure that they know that he was on guard and watching his mom. It was cute. (laughs) All right, using some yellow. Just This is the Carbothello yellow ink. I kind of don't love the neon pencil there, so I'm going to kind of try to blend that out a little bit. And again, I mean, the thing with this is you kind of just have to know that there's, you know, there might be some parts of it that you don't love, or you may, you may decide after the fact that you liked it better before you did XYZ or whatever, but you don't, you know, you can't let that stop you from exploring and trying. So just, you know, try to go in to it with a little bit of an open mind. I feel like at least I, I have to tell myself that because I'm much more of a perfectionist artist than this would make you think. I, I like to have, um, I like to go realistic with my art, you know, and so um, doing things this way kind of prevents me from doing that because I'm having, I mean, you can get realistic looking works from with um, mixed media, no doubt. I've seen artists that do some incredible stuff, but it takes forever and I don't, I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> I'd much rather just throw some paint on it and then put 20,000 layers of pencil on top of something, you know, um, that's just me though. <laughs> so okay so let me tell you the colors that I was just using in case you care uh it doesn't say it just has numbers sorry these are those Carbathella though it was a set that I got of the Carbathella and I think I put it in the in that Amazon shop let me use a like a olive tone pencil here and I'm gonna do kind of imperfect lines like it looks a little bit better if you don't have like a straight solid line and then I'm going to use this kind of olive tone to go in and out and around this and it's a little bit wet still so but I don't 
I'm it's not I'm not hating what it's doing here. Okay, so there we go. The Queen Anne's lace has those little clusters of white flowers that are all kind of bunched up together, so I'm kind of trying to just give them a little bit of shadow underneath some of them. All right. this darker. I feel like it's really light down here. But I'm kind of slowly building up the layers because I don't want to just go in here and add a bunch, a ton of layers and then end up having to add more light on top later, you know. Okay, starting to get there. So are you controlling yourself? What? Are you controlling yourself? I am. I'm, I'm doing a good job, I All think. All right, just make sure. All right, I'm going to use this salmon -y color. I don't know what, what this is, but I like it. Mm, I don't think salmons have here. knees. It's salmon -y. Okay, and I'm going to use it in a couple other places, so it's not the only place that I'm using it. I'm going to go ahead and use it in... Oops, that's the purple ones. I keep going over those with this color. Okay, let's define these out a little bit. And I feel like I could have probably um, brought some of this down a little bit farther with the watercolor. But so far, so good. I'm liking it. It's fun. No stress. We can start adding some acrylics. So let's go ahead and do that because I feel like I'm kind of ready for some actual acrylics. And then we can go back in and kind of edit with our pencil and things. So I'm going to add um, in this. These will be kind of our last. These are the pastels. Um, they're so soft that and they're so powdery that you kind of don't want to layer on top of them because you really kind of almost can't once you put them down. So I'm going to put them in a couple places here on this one, maybe, if I can get them to stick and um, set them aside. And we'll bring them in at the very end if we want a little pop of something um, here and there. Okay, I'm going to put these away, making sure I get my pencils in the right spot. In the side so I've got some naphthol scarlet or just some red it doesn't really honestly make make that much difference I'm just kind of picked out some colors that I thought would work for this um, cadmium yellow light quinacridone magenta there I'm gonna put the cadmium yellow light on this side of the red because it's gonna be more of the brighter yellow and then I'm going to use some Australian Sienna or some Nickel Azo Yellow Gold or um, Quinacridone Gold or Indian Yellow Hue, just basically kind of that goldish yellow. Um, and then I've got Australian Yellow Green, which is like green gold. And then I'm going to use an aqua green, which is like cobalt teal. And then I've got Australian blue gum, which is like a phthalo blue with a little bit of, actually I think I want thalo blue instead because I want to have a darker blue color. I need some dark in here. And that's what I use to do the splattering so that'll be a good one to mix in. Um, so the Australian blue gum would be kind of like a turquoisey blue. Um, like as if I used a little bit of the of a yellow with my just a tiny bit of yellow with my ultramarine blue. And then this one is Australian sky blue, which is like ultramarine blue and white. So it's like as if you added ultramarine blue and white. Okay. 
So I've got those, and then I think I want, I'm gonna put these ones that I'm using off to the side over here. Um, I think I want, well, I know I want some white. I'll be able to make a dark green with my yellow there. And put out some white. Okay. And I'm going to clean my hands off so that I don't get this on my workspace here because that paper is going to grab up anything I have on my hands if I touch it. Okay. So, oh, I've left that in the water. Darn it. So one thing with the, with watercolors is you don't want to mix your watercolor pens uh, or watercolor um, brushes with your acrylic brushes. Um, I honestly don't know why. I think that the acrylic brushes kind of make the watercolor brushes absorb less water because they're kind of a little more caustic. Plus, a lot of times your watercolor brushes are softer and you don't want to use the acrylics with them anyways because they'll damage them. Um, so I I keep my watercolor and acrylic brushes separate. You do you, but I'm just saying that's what I do. So, all right, so I'm gonna use my 3 8 inch angle brush and I'm gonna grab some yellow and my white and I'm gonna dab in just a few, not, I don't wanna overdo because I don't, I, I like the way that looks, so I don't wanna, overdo it, but I want a few little white light spots, and I'm going to add it to my little button yellow flowers down here. And then I want a little bit of it. I'm going to get some sienna. Woo, look how that made it orange. Real orange. I'm going to use a little bit of it at the top of this flower. And I do want that butterfly that's in there, so I'm going to use that sienna and go ahead and put in that butterfly and I'm gonna draw in the spots. So I'm gonna just kind of put in the base of it, the wings with this color, and then we'll add the, the rest of it. Okay, so this is that Australian sienna or like a, just an orangey yellow. It doesn't really have to be this exact color. And I'm gonna add some you can see what I'm talking about here. Like I'm adding this yellow on it. It's not, it's not merging with the color around it like watercolor would. So if I'd done this with watercolor, that yellow, as soon as I set it, it would just kind of and move into the other colors around it. But it's not going to do that because it's not watercolor. It's acrylics and it's just going to stay put. So I'm going to put these white spots in here on our butterfly. There we go. And then we'll add the darker spots later. I'm gonna get some of the red. And I got just a more orangey red. So, you know, just a red that's a little bit more on the orange side. I'm gonna use that a little bit on my orange flower. Turned out to be a lot more red than I thought, so. Get some of that sienna color, add that. I figured it out. What? Acrylic paints make you whisper. <laughs> I didn't whisper until I started painting with acrylics. Oh, no. So, you know, usually, you know, when you're painting your acrylics, I've got you at a, like, 29, 30, sometimes uh -huh. 32 right. level of boost. Right. At the start of this show, I was down at 19 20 so you were carrying it all on your own mm. you were no boost at all <clears throat> I didn't heart, need a like, booster seat no no booster seat <laughs> now we need a high chair okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm using the red I added a little bit of magenta and the white here so I've got a pink and I'm going to use this on my pink flowers here and I'm going to go a little bit more magenta here now I use this kind of coral color down here and then I'm going to use this kind of pink. I just realized that this these pink ones only had it at the very top. I didn't really look at my reference photo that well. 
when I got going here. So I'm going to just dab on and you can see that this is going to stick. So it's going to go on top of whatever we've got going on just fine. We're not going to have any issues with this covering. If it was super waxy, like if you had a bunch of, of um, like colored pastels or something like, or, or not colored pastels. Well, yeah, pastels could do it too. But basically if your, if your paper surface was really saturated with substance, whatever it was that you were using, um, it could cause you issues with, you know, ab absorption or, you know, the acrylics could kind of just set on top. So in that case, if you've got like a really heavy layer of pencil or something on here, what you can do is spray it with a um, fixative, um, just a, any kind of, let's see if I have one right here. I have a matte fixative, um, workable, fast drying. Um, I'd spray it on here, but it would stink up the studio and it's really, you should really take it outside. You shouldn't do it in an enclosed space. Um, so anyhow, but, but that do that. And then, um, it'll, you can paint on top of it. Once you do that, it just basically seals it and kind of resets it and like an invisible layer of like, almost like sandpaper, you know, on top of it gives it a workable, workable finish that you can put other layers on. And same thing for like pastels or, or, um, pencils or whatever, as you're working, if you get to a place where they're not like laying down anymore, because that paper is saturated with, um, with substance, you know, the either waxy or, or chalk or whatever, then that would workable fixative will help give you, it can make it a little bit darker though, just FYI. All right. So I've made up a purple here with my magenta and, um, phthalo blue, and I'm going to use that on the Ooh, that is dark. I'm going to get a little bit of white here. There we go. <laughs> that is really dark. I don't want some of that to show through, so I don't want to cover it up too much. I, and I want my pencil lines to show. Like, I, I want to see all the layers. So I'm just using this as an enhancement, not to cover everything up. All right, and then I want to use a little bit of it in other places, too, down here. So that it all kind of goes together. So I'm going to use this in this little flower right here. These little thistles or whatever they are. So I have that color of purple in a couple other places. And I'm going to make a really light purple. I might even use a little bit of that ultramarine blue, that light ultramarine, and kind of dab on the very tip of some of these. Okay, that looks good. We're just making art here. Nothing. Okay, it's very, it's very soft. It, I mean, it goes along with the reference photos. So if you want to go a little bit darker with yours, by all means do. Like, Normally I would have more contrast, so I might go in with a little bit more, um, of a darker color and kind of add some little bits of darker, but I kind of like the soft look, you know, the pastel-y kind of softness to this. So it's up to you how, how dark you want to go with yours. Just feel free to make it more intense of a contrast if you want that. I'm going to add a little bit more right in here because I feel like I kind of lost these flowers. They sort of merged into one big blob of pink right in that area. Okay, that looks good. Getting there. And Maybe add a few little dabs of that in a couple other places. All right. Let's add some of this green gold. Now this is such a kind of a weird intense color. We're not going to need a lot of it. It's going to really have an impact. So I'm going to just use it for some of the leaves in a few places and Maybe 
do some stems with it over here. Using this brush, just point down and dabbing it to get in little leafy shapes, right? And then I can, uh, here, I'll show you the watercolor or the kind of watercolor-ish effect with acrylic. So if I want to do kind of a wash, I can, but it's not going to go anywhere. You can see every time I kind of touch it, it just kind of sets there. It's not going to migrate, um, but I can get that kind of soft look. So I'm going to kind of soften off some of this while it's wet. And just use water around it and let it kind of push, but it's not going to move much at all. You can see it's not going anywhere where I put it is where it's staying. So just kind of know that, you know, it's not a good or bad. It's just the difference in materials. It'll migrate just a little bit, like it's doing a little bit right there, but it's not going to move as much as watercolor will. If I put a watercolor on top of a wet surface, it's going to go and just move, you know, really. Um, maybe not make that sound, but you get the idea. <laughs> I was going to say, is that a dramatic reenactment? <laughs> Probably yes. at some level it's making that sound. What? Probably. At some at, level it's making that. Yeah. That's true. Subsonic. Yeah. Or you can make it yourself. Just don't that's confuse true. it with the pew pew. <laughs> it's more of a pew. Pew. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Thank you for that, honey. I appreciate it. Just trying to keep it real. using some of that teal green here we're getting close to done with this I mean we can be done at any point that we like it um, I think I'm gonna use a round brush here Let me get a round and use the white on top of the watercolor area just to so now that, you know, I've got this kind of soft watercolory area here, and I'm just going to use this, this titanium white is going to really show up. So anywhere that I put it, it's going to really, you know, be maximum impact here. Dabbing it on. Use a little bit of that light ultramarine blue in here. Maybe do a little bit of that in there. And this will cover over just about anything. That, so if you've got any pencil lines or anything in here that you didn't like, it'll pretty much cover over everything. It um, doesn't do all that well on top of alcohol ink sometimes. Like it can bleed through um, when, I, you know, when I've used it on top of alcohol type inks. Um, sometimes, you know, I don't know. I think if you were to spray it with that fixative, it wouldn't have that issue. So if you're worried about it, you can do that but adding a little bit of that light blue up there and add some to these flowers just to get them a little something something this is that white with just a little bit of blue I'm liking it it's starting to get there maybe get some of that darker some thalo blue with some of that and a little bit of purple. Just kind of spiky flowers over here. They look like bachelor buttons almost. I might do, I just make them into bachelor buttons after all. And then there's some kind of forget me not type of flowers over here. So I'm going to do some of those. And I want to leave, like I said, I want to leave some of that pencil line. So I might go above it and leave that ghost of the pencil line around it. So it's like, you can see, ooh, there's something else there, you know. Not cover over all of my original paint here that we did. I don't know, it's, it's close. There's a little bee in my picture, too. I've actually, there's a couple of bees, so I might put those in as well. I'm going to do a dark, dark. 
see if I can get a black out of this. I don't know. I might have to put out some black. Though I don't know if I want it completely black. I think I might draw in my B with my watercolor crayons instead. It might be a little bit less a little bit less harsh. So I'm gonna put one right here. Little B. A black watercolor crayon, or you could use this chalk pastel or watercolor pastel, whatever. So, this will be water soluble. So, if I mess with it later, it will come up. So, I'll just have to watch that. Make sure I'm gonna use this dark blue that I created over here and my white and just give him some wings. And he's, he's against that purple, or that yellow, so he kind of shows up against that pretty well. I'm going to get the white. There we go. Cute. That's about all I'm going to do. I'm not going to really define him too much, I think. Um, if I want to, I might add just a little bit of my darker yellow at the top. Just to kind of give him a little bit more... shading up there, but yeah, it's cute. Okay, and let's use that for the other one that's over here too. Let's see where we can put him. We're going to have to just paint him in because we haven't left room for him. So we're just going to have to do him right here. There, and right here with the little head. There. Little rump. Okay, and then We'll do a little bit of white at the bottom here. And then I'll do the nice thing about acrylics. You can cover over anything with them. So there we go. We're painting in our little B. And I'm keeping it pretty sketchy. Like, you know, pretty soft and not getting too fussy with my drawing. So that he's got some personality. And then I'm going to get my white, maybe a little bit of that blue. And this is a far cry from our bead that we did the other night, you know. He's much, much looser, much more flowy. I'm going to get this dark, dark blue that I've got here. And I'm just going to kind of touch on to that crayon. It'll make it stick a little bit. And the paint's still wet, so it's going to move just slightly into it. <clears throat> okay, that's cute. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Um, let me get some of my reds here and make a dark brown. Add just a little bit of blue to make them desaturate them. I'm going to use that here and just dab in some little dots around my white flowers. Yep. Get some green. Maybe get some phthalo blue and add that to the green. There we go. And we'll do some little bits around these yellow flowers here. Maybe around this one too. I'm honestly not looking at my references all that much too, which I think is kind of the fun of these kind of things too. You can kind of just let your imagination go. It doesn't have to be an actual real flower, you know, you can just kind of do something a little bit more abstracted. That's, that's the name, <laughs> the abstract flowers, even though this isn't really technically abstract. Abstract would be, you know, something that you can't necessarily identify. We can identify this a little bit. So, but I like to use that because people like to, I don't know, 
it makes it a little bit different than Impressionist because this is, I think, a little bit looser style than Impressionist would be. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that green and my white. I'm going to use it at the top of these flowers. And these ones just a little bit. I like what the acrylics did down there though. It's pretty, it's, it looks nice, it's soft and kind of flowed pretty nicely for me. So if you don't have watercolors, I would say just try this with acrylics. It may not look exactly the same, but that's okay. That's not the goal anyways. some orange in the centers of these flowers. Maybe get a little bit more of that yellow to pop in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our pencil here. And I don't think I'm going to use this one. I, I need a little bit finer line. That's not quite dry, so I'm going to let you take that and dry it because it's kind of at the point where there's a lot of wet parts to it. Let him dry that. So I think I'm going to use some black and I'm, I'll try the Carbothello black, but I may use my Prismacolor black. And then I also have some black ink which I haven't pulled these ones out yet. These are the pit, pit pens, if you've used them, the Faber-Castell ones. They're great because you can blend with them just a little bit. So when you first put them down while they're wet, they can smudge, you can smudge them around a little bit. Um, so I'll probably use that for some of it um, for on my butterfly. I've got a few different colors here. I've got like a dark brown and I think I saw some like orangey color. So I'll grab an orange. I've got a whole big thing. Scarlet red, cap mort caput mortem and black. So brown, orangey, red and black. And really just use what you've got though. You know, if you don't have those exact. I've also got my Unu, Una, Unipasca which will blend a little bit too. It's actually more like just acrylic paint though. So it's gonna smear a little bit more. This is a little bit softer, the pit pens, so it's a little bit more subtle. So I'm gonna save the the Posca pens for like the very final layer where I really want like some emphasis on a few things. So I'm just gonna grab out my colors here for that. And I'm going to shake them up because they, they'll do better if they're shaken up ahead of time. I might even use the blue. I don't know. I'm just going to use them all. Who knows? Get them all ready. I've already also started them. When you first get them, you have to start them by pressing down on the paper. You kind of have to pump, pump the ink into the nib. And so you may need to do that if they're brand new um, just to get that ink flowing into them. And, all right, so there we go. That, that looks terrible, I don't know. It's not, a, it's not a completed work. I had literally had these two big, huge orange streaks here, and so I was just layering on top to see what the different pencils and things did on top of acrylic paint, and then was kind of using the um, watercolors too to try different effects and see what I preferred doing, and that's kind of how I came up with the idea of doing the, the um, ink tense pencils first and then you know because I was having issues with the watercolor coming up when I was using certain things on top of them so all right that looks great so let's go ahead and let's do our butterfly here we're almost done here this is just kind of finishing little touches now at this point and I'm noticing that there's some white too on this butterfly so I might do some white bits too, or I might just get out my pencil and do, or, you know, my <coughs> paint, still got paint out here, so, 
Um, let's go ahead and use this carbothello. That'll be a little bit softer than... Oh yeah, that's working nicely. Yeah, that's going on the, on top of that just nicely, and it's going to be kind of subtle, a little bit softer looking than actual paint. So again, this is just a preference. I mean, I use acrylics just all on their own 99% of the time. So this is just for something different. It's not, it's not saying this is a better way of doing it. Just trying something new. Scarlet red here. Let's get some red. There we go. A little bit of red there. There's a little bit of red down there. And again, since these are pastels, they'll blend a little bit. So I can, you know, if I wanted to use that alcohol, I could do that on them. That's about all I'm going to do. I'm not going to overdo the detail on him. I've already got the white lines there, so that's nice. And then if I use my white, you can see what it's doing. It's kind of turning it gray in spots, so that's actually kind of nice. It's softening it off um, a little bit. I like that. Actually, want a second. There we go. Give him two. Okay, um, let's do, what am I doing here? I, I, I'm mixing my pencils up. Um, let's do, try this orange on top of here. No, didn't cover. So at some point it kind of, you know, stops covering I'm going to use this bright neon pencil over the top of this paint, though. I kind of went a little bit dark on that orange flower there. And then I can also use my paint pen on there, too, if I wanted to. And that might... No, it's still a little bit not really showing up very much. But I can kind of mark out some things. And again, I kind of like seeing that little ghost of my original lines so I've been kind of leaving those uh, intentionally but again that's your you know preference so if you don't like that look then you can clean it up I'm going to get a purple pencil and I'm going to go around some of these and add just a little bit of extra like detail not n not really outlining anything but just kind of messing it up a little bit. You can see the one that I've done it and the one I haven't and see you can decide which one you like better. Just a little bit. I feel like I covered up all of my initial drawing on this one so just want to add a little bit of that back in. With that kind of scribbling that I had going on. Okay. I'm a little bit, yeah, there we go. And I'm pretty happy with that one, so I don't think I'm going to mess with that one. This one, I think, is at a pretty good place, so I think I'll leave that. Um, I think I've got, like, a gray-blue here. Cloud blue. And I'm going to use a little bit of that in my, around my white. Just a shade like maybe around the centers a little bit on top. Just to give it a little something extra. Okay. And then let's use a dark, dark pink. This is crimson red. I'm going to use that up at the top of these ones and just add some little spiky things that are happening at the top of those.
maybe a little bit of that darker color in the middle. Just scribbling it in. And that was the Shiraz color. Nothing says you can't get these again and use them again, though. These are the watercolor pencils. So if you decided you wanted more of that Shiraz color back in, um, it may not layer over the top of the acrylics very well, but it'll definitely layer on the paper still. So I could do that, and I could add a little bit of water and make it you know, spread a little bit here too. So that's another option too. Um, again, it, you know, until the, your paper is completely, um, completely soaked in with, or completely saturated, call it saturated, even though it's not wet, but you get the idea. Like it, it um, the paper can only hold so much, um, before it, it just won't hold anymore. And so you have to either layer with a an acrylic that an acrylic or something like that 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 will cover over or spray it with you know spray it with a a uh, fixative or something so that's interesting so adding the light light pink here the watercolor basically becomes part of the paper right and right. the other mediums, the acrylic and the pencils and things like that are on the paper. Right, right. Mm -hmm. There may be some leakage. Okay, got it. Yes, that is correct. Never thought of it that way. Mm hmm Yes. But the thing with the watercolor is if I was to go over here and add water to it, they will re, um, reactivate. So if you have a good paper, the watercolor will reactivate. Um, so that's why I haven't been doing a lot of wet media on here because the watercolors would tend to wipe, wash off. So going in here with some dark green here, mix the green gold with the phthalo blue, but you can just, you know, use whatever, um, whatever you want, whatever blue or green you're using here. Just doing a little bit darker around some of these areas here. Giving a little bit of detail, a little bit of darker bits. Okay, that that's helping, I think. And I'm going to use a little bit of just watered down Maybe soften off some of these so they're not so harsh. be your cup of tea. I understand if it's not, you know, it's, it's hard for me to do this kind of stuff. Cause I see where I want to like keep going with it. That's what I was saying earlier before we started that I need to kind of like edit myself and like know where to stop. Cause I kind of want to keep going and make it more and more realistic, but you kind of lose the freshness of the, this sort of style of paint if you overwork it. So I'm going to try not to do that. <laughs> even though I'm sorely tempted. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, it is. It's fun. It's fun, right? Um, all right. Let me think if I was, there was anything else I was going to do before I start, stop. Um, I was going to do a little bit with the paint pens we talked about. So this is where you have to be, you know, careful not to overdo. Um, Cause it's, Again, it's like the, you know, pencil or whatever, but this is actually going to show up uh, over 
everything else. So, um, you know, just edit accordingly. I like to use the blue with purples. It's a nice, like, you know, anything that's got a little, like a little bit of blue or a little bit of purple or even white, it looks nice with, with that. Okay, so that's good. I don't know what happened right there, but that's kind of cool what it did there. It kind of looks like it, it uh, bled a little bit or did something there. And I think I already used a little bit of this pencil up here at the beginning. Okay, so I don't want to overdo. I don't, I think that's good. I think I do want some green. I'm going to... Just do some like light leaves yeah, in this sketchy style, which shows through the the paper to the other stuff underneath. And maybe some little scribbles down here for the little the leaves that are popping through. Not too many. Okay. I don't think I need any of that. I might do a little bit of yellow on these ones, though. Just tiny little bits just to kind of define them a little bit. Again, though, not everything has to be defined, so this is up to you however much you want to make yours, you know, realistic or leave it super flowy and impressionistic style. But I'm liking it. I'm liking how it's turning out though. I'm going to use a little bit of this black on my butterfly just in a couple spots. And I was going to say too there's some pens that you can use. I've got some Uni Posca. Um, this is what I'm using now but the Uni uh, or uni, I'm not sure exactly what you're, I guess it's probably uni. Um, it, this brand, um, creates some ballpoint pens that are also water, waterproof. So I have a bunch of their different waterproof pens here and they come in different colors. Um, and I included, I think one, uh, maybe these ones, um, but they're all basically the same kind of pens um, as far as they all generally have waterproof type inks. Um, so you can draw over the top of your artwork with them and not have to worry about. And they can give you some really nice fine details so I could go through here and give my little bee wings a little um, outline if I want to with these. And they're a little bit softer. They're very fine point. So they're really easy to use, just like a regular pen, you know, but um, you don't have to worry about them bleeding if you, you know, of course in this case where everything's gonna bleed, so <laughs> we're not worried about that anyways, but um, I'm gonna outline just a little bit of my daisies here with this. kind of wish I'd separated out my daisies a little bit. You can see how they kind of make it weird, like they're too close together or they're too perfectly separated. So I kind of wish I had had like two that are closer together or like maybe one right here, but that's for another day. You know, it's just, it is what it is at this point. I can use some pink if I want to, whatever, you know, you do whatever you are into. I don't think that's, I think that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna sign with this one here. That's the vision needle, it's called. Um, kind of fine point, they have different ones that do different things at Jetstream and different ones. Um, some of them are a little bit more like a gel pen than others, but okay, so let's go ahead and tear off. I have I didn't really do up to the border much with this, so I don't think it's gonna be a super dramatic reveal, but we'll have a little bit of a border. And 
if you wanted to, like if you have gouache, you could use gouache with this too. So the gouache would be similar to the watercolor, only it would go on probably over the top of the watercolor because it is like a um, opaque watercolor. Um, and it's matte, so it wouldn't be as shiny as acrylic, but you know, the thing with the gouache too, like the acrylic or like the watercolor is that it is, um, reactivates with water. So there we go. All right. Fun. Hope you guys like that. That was really fun. I hope I enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this, because I would be more than happy to do more like this in this kind of mixed media style. It's just a little bit kind of fresh, something different. We've done acrylics for 10 years now, <laughs> so I can count on one hand the number of <laughs> other kinds of art we've done in different videos. So um, it's kind of fun for me and hopefully maybe fun for you guys. And please share your artwork with me in the comments. You can see the um, links to my social media where if you tried this and you did kind of your version, I'd love to see it and see what you came up with. And um, yeah, we'll see you hopefully on Saturday. We're going to be doing a live stream on Saturday to reveal our new website. So stick around for that. It's going to make it so much easier to find my videos and to um, get some freebies um, on there. We're working on um, all kinds of fun stuff on there. It's not quite 100% ready, but it's at least ready for now. <laughs> so it is what it is, as we say. <laughs> and we're going to uh, let you guys start enjoying it because I think you're going to really like it. I hope I hope you will. So, all right. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.